Hey guys, Dan here with Oklahoma Joe's and today we're going to be doing a maintenance video for the Ryder Pellet Grill line and specifically we're going to be dealing with auger jams. So auger jams can occur when pellets get bound up in the auger tube and kind of seize the auger and stop it from feeding pellets into the fire pot. So this will result in uh, a flame out. Uh, basically you're not going to be able to keep the fire going without the fuel. So this can happen when you're using say damp or wet pellets, they kind of fall apart and crumble, uh, or just pellets that are kind of crumbling or old, all of that can kind of get in there and bind up the auger and stop it from working. In terms of how you would see this happening, again, like I said, you'll see uh, the fire go out inside the smoke chamber, you're not achieving the temperatures that you're set, and then you can also have an error code readout on the screen, this would be an ER5. Uh, and So this is how you would deal with those issues. The first thing you're going to want to do when addressing and assessing this issue is you're going to want to drain out the entire contents of the pellet hopper. So the quick draw hopper makes that really easy to do. You just pull the handle, the entire contents will drain out into your pellet storage bucket. So once you empty that hopper, you're, want to, you're going to want to run the grill and just kind of see what's happening um, with the auger. So when you first turn on the grill, it will run for a few seconds and then it will pause for about 90 seconds and then it'll start up. So put the uh, grill in a high grilling mode and just watch the auger and see what it does. And if you're still not getting any movement after a couple minutes, you know that the auger is jammed up. So once you know that you do have a jam by observing the auger and seeing that it's not moving, there's going to be a few steps that you can take to try to clear that jam up and I'm going to walk you through those. Uh, just before you do any of these, make sure that the grill is completely cool and unplugged. So the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the hopper guard by removing the four screws that are holding it in place. And now once the guard is removed, you have clear access to the auger. So what you're going to want to do is take your screwdriver and use it to push the auger back and forth in a horizontal motion. And the unit I have here is not jammed up, but I'm using it as demonstration purposes. Um, so you will see some pellets in the auger. Uh, but again, like I said, you're going to want to slide this back and forth to kind of free up any jam. Once you've done that, you want to plug it back in, replace the guard, and try to start it up and assess the auger turning as we did before. If you're seeing the auger turn freely, then you know you've broken up the jam and uh, you're, you're able to continue cooking. If you see that the, the auger is still giving you trouble and is still frozen, uh, we'll have some other steps that we can take to try to break that up. So the second way you can try to address a jam is from the uh, smoke chamber side. So what you're going to want to do, open your grill and take out all the interior components. Now once you have the uh, baffle exposed, you want to turn the lever to sear mode. If you have a Ryder Deluxe, if you have any of the other Ryder models, you can simply take out all the interior components and the heat baffle and you'll have clear access to the fire pot. So once you have clear access to the fire pot, you want to take a heavy wire and try to snake the end of the auger tube. So basically, you're going to be sticking the heavy wire into the auger tube and trying to push that through and break up any blockage that you can kind of feel with the wire. Okay, you want to wiggle it around and try to break that up. So now you're going to replace all the components and again plug the unit back in and uh, again run through that same cycle to try to assess and see if the auger is turning. If the auger is turning freely, you've broken it up the jam. If not, uh, we'll have to move on to the next step um, which will help you clear a more severe jam. For the next step in clearing your auger, we're going to actually have to remove the hopper housing to get to the auger uh, in, order to, in order to remove it from the auger tube and really clear out a more severe jam. This is going to require a little bit of disassembly and I'm going to walk you through those steps. So the first step in removing the hopper housing to get to the auger tube is going to be to remove the hopper lid to make it a little bit easier. There's two Phillips screws that hold these hinge pins in. So you're just going to want to unscrew those and then remove the hinges. So with the hinge pins out, the hopper lid will just lift off like that. The next step is going to be removing the control panel and disconnecting the, the wires. So the control panel has three screws holding it in place, two on the outer side and one on the inside. Now with the screws out, you can remove the control panel and set on top of the hopper 
And now you want to disconnect the wires and make note of the colors that are connecting. So first this small cable is going to be your uh, temp sensor inside the smoke chamber. And then for the others, it's actually just color to color. So we have black and white to black and white, red to red, yellow to yellow. And the last is going to be the purple that actually does go to the black. Okay. Take the control panel off and set that to the side. So next you want to disassemble the hopper housing from the grill. And that's going to take four screws. There's two in the front here and two in the back for four total. You can either use a 7 16 socket or you can use a Phillips head to unscrew these screws. Once all four screws are removed, you want to make sure you cut the zip tie, but be careful not to cut any of the uh, actual cables. So with all of the screws removed and the cable tie cut onto those wires, uh, you can go ahead and pull off the hopper housing. So once you have the housing off and you have the motor, the auger, and the auger tube exposed, what you're going to want to remove now is this Phillips screw that's holding the bushing in that is holding the auger in place. Once the bushing screw is removed, you can then use your screwdriver to work the auger out of the tube. Be careful not to pull on the motor, uh, putting strain on the uh, shear pin that holds the motor to the auger. You're going to need to just kind of shimmy out the auger from the auger tube. And as you can see, you're going to have the pellets that are still in the tube kind of come out with it. So make sure you have a bucket underneath ready to catch all of those pellets coming out. And then once you have it free, or if it's a more difficult jam, you can keep using your screwdriver to uh, pull out the auger. But once you have it free, you can remove the entire auger. So once you have the entire auger free, you can see this is what it looks like. Um, if it is a severe jam with, you know, damp or pellet crumbs in there, you want to just make sure you clean this out, clean out the auger tube, uh, make sure that none of the remnants of that jam is in there that will cause another jam. Uh, and just make sure you kind of just thoroughly clean this and the auger tube. So with the auger disassembled and the tube, the auger, and all of this all cleaned up, you're ready to reassemble it and get back to cooking. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is reinsert the auger the same way that you pulled it out, just by sliding it into the auger tube. And make sure that you are lining up the hole in the bushing with the hole that's in the outer housing for the screw to line up and lock in that bushing. So take your Phillips screwdriver and replace that screw. So the next thing we're going to do is replace the hopper housing, taking care to make sure that all of the cables are nicely tucked inside. So what you're going to want to do is take special care to make sure that you are routing the wires into the, the housing as well and not pinching them off. So as soon as you get the hopper housing on a little bit, you want to kind of pull those cables through and make sure they're going in the right position. And now the other thing you're going to have to do is make sure that you're lining up the quick draw hopper handle with the hole in the side of the auger housing. And you're also going to make sure that you get the housing of the hopper underneath the bracket that attaches it to the uh, smoke chamber. The next step will be replacing the control panel. So you can just take the panel and put it on top of the hopper like so, so that you can connect the cables. So again, we're gonna do color to color, red to red. And the connectors have a one-way connection so that you can't connect them incorrectly. So the next step, you wanna make sure that those wires are inside the housing. And then you wanna replace that zip tie, make sure the cables are tidy and out of the way of any of the functioning. And then just clip. But next you want to put the control panel back in place and then replace the three screws that fastened it. Next you're going to replace the hopper lid and then replace the hinge pin. So 
So last you want to replace the guard in the hopper with the four screws that hold it in place. So I've showed you a couple methods for how to clear up an auger jam and hopefully uh, these will help you kind of get back on track and back to cooking. If what I've showed you here hasn't worked for you or if you're finding it a little difficult, please don't hesitate to call our customer service and they can help walk you through these steps as well. I also wanted to talk a little bit about how to prevent these jams from happening uh, so you don't have to worry about this stuff in the future. So first and foremost, you want to make sure that you're using dry pellets and you're also using uh, solid and clean pellets and you don't want to be using the crumbs and things like that. That's what's going to get in there and bind up the auger. Second, if you find that you've had these jams or you live in a little bit more humid uh, area that has a little bit more humidity in it, um, there's a, different, a little bit of a different shutdown process that you can do that will greatly reduce the chance of having these auger jams and it involves kind of burning out the uh, auger tube and what's left in the auger so you don't have pellets sitting even in the auger tube. So the way that you're going to do that is once you're finished cooking, the first thing you're going to do, pull the quick draw uh, handle and drain out the contents of the hopper and then you're going to set your grill to a high setting and let that run for about five minutes. So that's going to keep the auger turning, push all the pellets out of the auger into the fire pot. It's actually going to have the side benefit of running a uh, basically a burn off and a cleaning burn. It'll clean out the, the heat baffle from grease and things like that. After about five minutes, that should have cleared out the auger tube. Turn it back to your shutdown sequence and let that run through and then you're done. Uh, so like I said, this will basically clean out the entire auger tube. You don't have to worry about pellets sitting in there while you're, the grill is stored. Um, the only sort of side effect of that is that it'll take a little bit longer to get started the next time, about five minutes. And this is going to be the time that it takes for the system to reprime the auger. Uh, so it's kind of a trade-off in that way. Um, but overall, like I said, it will greatly prevent um, uh, the risk of jamming up the auger. So hopefully this instruction and these tips have helped you with any issues that you're having and will prevent you from having them in the future. Like I said, if you have any issues, don't hesitate to call our customer service and we'd be happy to help you and get you right back to cooking. Thanks for watching. At Oklahoma Joe's, we are dedicated to helping you get the most out of your smoker. We welcome your comments, questions, and suggestions on our products and videos. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest product news, tips, and recipes.